It's time to update my late 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro to stay in step with an increased video and audio production schedule. The RAM is soldered to the motherboard, so that's out of the question, but the original 500GB SSD routinely hovers around 80% capacity, and as a result, I have to frequently delete files and folders to make room for new productions. The original battery has been through a few hundred cycles and is nearly end of life, struggling to charge more than 90% even after battery calibration and resetting the system management controller at boot up. After a hard target search, it was a no-brainer for me to choose an other world computing product as I've had good experiences upgrading previous Macs with OWC for nearly two decades. They're pricey, but the quality and the support is worth it. And Apple does their best to discourage upgrading their computers anymore, but somehow OWC finds a way to make it possible. I was determined to purchase everything through Amazon for this project, and so hope to also find OWC's newer tech battery for my laptop as an option, but it was nowhere to be found in Amazon search results. So that left me with few comfortable choices. I did find a fairly high-rated battery replacement designed for my Mac from a company I'm not familiar with, Miati. I checked to be sure the connector matched the one on my original battery, and it did, but was concerned about the low price. Miati is priced $30 less than OWC's battery. The capacity for both seems pretty similar, but the OWC battery comes with additional tools and adhesive remover to combat Apple's desire to keep end users from replacing their own laptop battery. For the convenience of Amazon shopping, I chose the Miati battery, but saving $30 cost me hours of frustration, as you'll soon see. First, a USB boot drive had to be created. An excellent OS X Daily article included a link to downloading Apple's OS X Mojave and had a simple command to copy and paste into Terminal, which facilitated frustration-free boot disk creation. I've linked to it in the description below since I can in no way improve on explaining the process. Cleaning up garbage on the current drive prior to backup and swap out saves time, ultimately, by not transferring garbage to the new drive. My favorite declutter app is Mac Paws Clean My Mac. I'm using version 3, but there's a more powerful version 10 available. Version 3 gets the job done well enough and removes junk I just don't need, like leftover bits from old installers, language localizations that don't apply, and cache files that take up too much valuable space. Now, I do this pretty often anyhow, since I've been fighting a losing storage battle with this 500GB SSD that came with my 6-year-old Mac, so all of this stuff is found and deleted in just a few minutes. And I'm always amazed at how much useless crap this utility removes, with no negative impact on the operating system or the installed applications. Now, this is just me, but prior to backing up the old drive with Apple's built-in time machine to an external drive, I like to launch all important non-OS-related applications, especially those I depend on for audio and video production. This way, if there's a problem with the transfer to the newly installed drive, I can be sure that software issues didn't exist on the old drive, which is a valuable troubleshooting tool. The backup takes a little while and is the last step before shutting down the computer to begin the battery and 1TB SSD installation. When the new SSD is in place, the time machine backup will copy over to the new drive and seamlessly get me back into business. Now this is my only computer, so if this doesn't go smoothly, I'll be in a pretty tough spot. I'm always in production on some kind of project, so I can't continue to work until this battery and SSD are successfully installed. Having a duplicate computer system in a production environment is the best practice here. Really, equipment redundancy, no matter what your business, is crucial to success if calamity hits. To help with certain aspects of this upgrade, I'm using an iFixit toolkit I found at Ace Hardware in the closeout bin. No toolkit is absolutely complete, but this is pretty close for my needs. Bits include flathead, Phillips, Torx, pentalobe, hex, and nut drivers. There's also an assortment of spudgers, tweezers, picks, and opening tools aboard. An anti-static wrist strap and suction tool are also a pleasant surprise. The Miati kit includes two drivers, one for removing external laptop case screws, and one for screws keeping the battery connector in place. 
There's an adhesive backing on the new battery to attach it to the inside of the top case, but as mentioned before, there is no adhesive remover to aid old battery extraction. There are 10 screws on the bottom of the laptop case that need to be removed. Be aware that the two screws just under the black hinge for the display are slightly shorter, differing from the other eight screws. After they're all out of the way, the bottom case pops away from the chassis with a bit of gentle persuasion and some patience. With six years of daily computing, there's dust all over the guts of this machine. The fans have gotten louder and have kicked in more quickly over time, and now it's clear to see why that's been so. Look at the dust collection in the fan blades and along the intake ports under the display hinge. First, I'm going to vacuum out the disgusting debris. This can help improve heat dissipation and yield quieter, efficient processing. Any performance I can eke out of this old Mac will be needed until Apple makes better engineering choices that include easier upgradability for end users. The current line of MacBook Pros not only have soldered non-replaceable RAM and glued-in-place batteries, but also have SSDs permanently soldered to the motherboard. How's that for environmentally friendly? If this trend continues, I'll only purchase used Macs prior to 2016 that allow me to upgrade these components to extend the life, value, and use of a Mac. Thinner and lighter is a pointless feature compared to user upgradability, in my opinion. Now that it's a bit cleaner in here, I'll peel back the protective plastic sticker over the battery connector and charge controller that prevents contact with the bottom case when fully assembled. The battery connector can be lifted straight up with the aid of a plastic pick from the iFixit kit if needed, and there are two screws securing the charge controller that need to be removed. Once screws are out of the way, the protective sticker can be removed completely and saved for reassembly later. Now, here's where I began to pay the price for saving cash with the Miati battery kit purchase over the other world computing battery set. Using a combination of dental floss and twine, I dislodged all six battery segments without adhesive remover. Now that's totally on me going cheap, but how challenging could it be? The sadists at Apple want to be sure removing glued-in laptop batteries outside of their service at $200 a pop is not for the do-it-yourselfer. I would have still been ahead of the game by getting the OWC battery kit at $90 with adhesive remover and additional removal tools. But to be fair, OWC also recommends having a pro install the battery after purchase, so Apple's battery service really isn't highly inflated for those who are faint of heart. But, as with so much in life, Tenacity has its own reward. Lesson learned, frustration earned. I did find two excellent tutorials, though, one from Mac Sales, which is OWC, and one from Pearl Mac. These are linked in the description below, so you can avoid my self-inflicted irritation by not having the right tools for the task. Check those tutorials out for the fine details of how to. To be clear, none of this is a slight towards Miati. The battery I got seems to be well made, and it was packaged very securely for delivery. I wanted the convenience of shopping on Amazon, so this is the battery kit I chose. The installation was smooth, and the battery fits my laptop perfectly. After calibrating the battery with a few charge-discharge cycles, I have enough juice to edit videos, record multi-track audio, charge a cell phone through USB, and browse the web or check emails for several hours just like when this MacBook Pro was new. For $60, I got exactly what I was expecting. So I would definitely recommend this Miati battery to a brave DIYer, and then also suggest getting some adhesive remover to make the old battery removal simpler and safer. Leave a comment below if you've ever had a repair or upgrade experience that didn't go quite as well as you hoped. How'd you get through to the end? I'd like to know. Finally, after well over an hour, all six compartments are freed from their sticky glue. The residual adhesive needs to come out so the new battery can have a flat surface to adhere to. And it's pretty satisfying when these dried glue strips release in just one pull, but isopropyl alcohol and swabs do help. Other bits need a plastic pick to leverage out the glue. And this will take some time, but rest assured, the worst part is over. One final round of forced air to get more dust out of the chassis, 
And then the backing on the battery adhesive can be removed so we can finalize this upgrade. One mention here, which was also reported in the Amazon comments for the Miati battery and stated during one of the tutorials linked in the description below, the wires on the battery connector are a bit long and need to be curved slightly to assure the connector sits flush with the battery in place. Take a look. A pair of long tweezers can safely mold the wires to a curved length that accommodates this necessity. Patience and a gentle touch will go a long way here. Finagling the battery compartments to sit squarely while assuring the charge controller lines up with the two screw holes needed for reassembly can be accomplished with a plastic pick before adhesive permanently sets up. Then two screws go back into place and the protective sticker saved from the old battery removal can be placed on top of the charge controller. And this cellophane can now be removed. With the battery install finished, it's time to upgrade the storage, but I don't recommend connecting the battery back up to the main board at this time. Running residual power to any computer while changing out components is a bad idea that can inadvertently ruin any computer. Undoing a single screw allows the SSD to slide out easily from the slot, making room for the new one terabyte drive. Use of an anti-static wrist strap is highly recommended to protect the SSD from static discharge. The old SSD will be repurposed for extra storage once everything transfers from the time machine backup to the new terabyte drive. The Aura X2 SSD slides right into place and a single screw locks it down. Now the battery terminal is connected to the main board. Just be sure the protective sticker over the battery charge controller is back where it belongs. And if you hate dust as much as me, one last vacuuming of all surfaces is required for peace of mind. Screws that came out initially when opening the bottom case on the laptop have to go back, but remember the two screws under the black display hinge are slightly shorter than the other eight screws. The USB boot disk I created off camera using OS X Daily's article now gets put into service so that the Mac can install a fresh copy of OS X Mojave. This does take a while. It's a good time to finally catch up on lunch I missed earlier. Seriously, low blood sugar will induce more frustration. When finally prompted, I connect the Time Machine backup drive to finalize the new SSD. So I went from an old drive, 80% full, to a new drive, less than half full. That's a huge win, enabling my bad storage habits to flourish for a while longer. And the new Miati battery is nearly fully charged out of the box but I'll also properly calibrate it to get optimal performance. So what have I discovered during my latest tech adventure? First, almond butter pretty much tastes the same as peanut butter, but at nearly three times the price, and it makes a lousy acrylic paintbrush cleaner, obviously. Second, truth is indeed stranger than fiction, but Stranger Things was really only worth watching for the first season, and so was Black Mirror, and Westworld, and they all remind me of how disappointing Lost was over 10 years ago. And finally, a sense of humor can go a long way towards making the best out of a tough situation, and it can be a challenge to completely avoid circumstances to blame on others when nobody believes that aliens live in Antarctica. Uh, well, the algorithm probably just demonetized me, so uh, like, comment, and subscribe anyway to egg me on to make more videos about my misadventures.